हे फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल ऑल अबाउट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी अंडरस्टूड अबाउट द वेक्टर मल्टीप्लीकेशन एंड वी हैव सीन दैट देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ मल्टीप्लीकेशन दैट इज द डॉट प्रोडक्ट एंड द क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट सो नाउ इन दिस वीडियो लेट अस सी सम सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम्स बेस्ड ऑन दिस डॉट प्रोडक्ट एंड द क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द वैक्टर्स सो हियर इन द फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल वी हैव बिन गिवन द थ्री वैक्टर्स दैट इज पी क्यू एंड द आर सो हियर First, we have been asked to find the unit vector that is perpendicular to the both vectors q and the r. And secondly, we have been asked to find the vector component of the p along the q. So first, let us find the unit vector that is perpendicular to the both vectors q and the r. So we know that the unit vector that is perpendicular to the both vectors q and the r can be given as this q cross r divided by the magnitude of this q cross r. So first of all, we need to find the value of the q cross r, and we have seen that that can be found with the help of the determinant. So here, if we see the value of the q x, q y, and the q z, then that is equal to two minus one and the two. And similarly, the values of the r x, r y, and the r z is equal to two minus three and the one. So here, if we simplify this determinant, then we will have this minus one. Plus six times a x minus two minus four times a y plus minus six plus two times a z. So that is equal to five a x plus two a y minus four a z. So in this way, we got the value of the q cross r. So now. Let us find the magnitude of this Q cross R. So the magnitude of this Q cross R can be given as the square root of this phi whole square plus two whole square plus minus four whole square. So that is equal to square root of twenty five plus four plus sixteen, and that is equal to root forty five. So we can say that the unit vector that is perpendicular to the both vectors q and the r is equal to this one divided by square root of root forty five times phi a x plus two a y minus four a z, and that is equal to point seven four five times a x plus point two nine times a y minus 0.59 times a z. So in this way, we got the unit vector that is perpendicular to the both vectors q and the r. So similarly, now let us see the second part. So now in the second part, we have been asked to find the vector component of the p along the q vector. So here, the vector component of the p along the q, or this p q, can be given as this p dot, this a q. That is the unit vector along the q times a q. So as you know, this unit vector along the q can be given as this q divided by magnitude of the q vector. And similarly, once again, this a q can be written as this q divided by the magnitude of the q. So from this we can say that that is equal to p dot q divided by The magnitude of q whole square times q. That means here, first of all, we need to find the value of the p dot q. So here, this p dot q is equal to this two times two, that is four, plus zero times minus one, plus minus one times two. So that is equal to two. Moreover, here we know that. The magnitude of the q vector is equal to square root of two whole square plus minus one whole square plus two whole square, and that is equal to three. So we can say that this q whole square that is equal to nine. So from this we can say that this p dot q divided by q whole square that is equal to this two divided by nine, and here the value of the q. Is equal to this two a x minus a y plus 
to az so if you further simplify it then we can say that that is equal to 0.44 times ax minus 0.22 times ay plus 0.44 times az so in this way we got the vector component of the p along the q vector so similarly now let us see the next example so here in the next example we have been given the two vectors a and the b and first we have been asked to find the value of the alpha and beta whenever two vectors a and b are parallel and then we have been asked to find the same alpha and beta whenever these two vectors are perpendicular to each other so first let us find the value of the alpha and beta whenever these two vectors are parallel to each other so here first we have been given that here two vectors a and b are parallel to each other so here let's say this is the vector a and this is the vector b so here since two vectors are parallel so we can say that here this vector a is equal to k times vector b where this k is the scalar that means here if we multiply the vector b with some scalar value then we can get the vector a right so it means that their components can also be found with the help of this scalar multiplication so we can say that here this ax is equal to this k times bx similarly this ay is equal to k times by and likewise this az is equal to k times bz where this ax ay and az are the components of the vector a and this bx by and the bz are the components of the b vector so from this we can say that here this 4 is equal to this k times alpha likewise in the second case we can say that here 2 is equal to this k times beta and likewise in the third case this minus 1 is equal to k times 3 or from this we can say that here this k is equal to minus 1 by 3 so now if you put the value of the k in the above expressions then we can say that here this alpha is equal to 4 divided by k and that is equal to minus 12 likewise this beta is equal to this 2 divided by k and that is equal to minus 6 so in this way we got the value of the alpha as minus 12 and the beta as minus 6 that means whenever these two vectors a and b are parallel then the value of the alpha is equal to minus 12 while the value of the beta is equal to minus 6 so similarly now let us see the second part so here in the second part we have been given that here the two vectors a and b are perpendicular to each other so here let's say this is the vector a and this is the vector b now here since both vectors are perpendicular so we can say that that dot product should be equal to zero right that means here this a dot b is equal to 0 or that is equal to this 4 times alpha plus 2 times beta minus 3 is equal to 0 so basically here we have multiplied the two vectors a and b component wise so now if you see this equation then we will get the many values of the alpha and beta for which this equation will get satisfied for example here if we put the value of alpha as minus 1 and beta as 7 by 2 then here we will get this 4 times minus 1 plus 2 times the 7 divided by 2 minus 3 and that will become 0 that means here these values of the alpha and beta is satisfying this equation likewise suppose if you take this alpha as 1 by 4 and beta as 1 then also this equation will get satisfied because in that case we will have this 4 times 1 by 4 plus 2 times 1 minus 3 and once again that will be equal to 0 so we can say that these values of the alpha and beta are also satisfying this equation so as you can see for the given equation we will have the multiple solutions that means whenever the two vectors a and b are perpendicular to each other then we will have the multiple solutions for which this equation will get satisfied and therefore 
we will not have the single solution all right so now let us move to the next example so now in this example we have been given the two vectors p and the q and here we have been asked to find the another vector r which has a magnitude 4 and its direction is perpendicular to the both vectors p and the q so here we have been given that the direction of the vector r is perpendicular to the both vectors p and the q and moreover here we have been also given the magnitude of this vector r that is equal to 4 so we can say that here this vector r is equal to the magnitude of this vector r times the unit vector that is perpendicular to the both vectors p and the q so here since we already know its magnitude so the only thing that we need to find is the unit vector that is perpendicular to the both vectors p and the q so we know that if we find the cross product of the p and q then we will get a vector that is perpendicular to the both vectors p and the q but of course its magnitude will not be equal to unity that means here we need to find the unit vector that is perpendicular to the both vectors p and the q and that can be given as this p cross q divided by the magnitude of this p cross q so let's say that is equal to a r that means now our this vector r is equal to the magnitude of this vector r times a r that means here to find this unit vector a r first of all we need to find the value of this p cross q so we know that this p cross q can be given by this determinant so now in this determinant let us put the values of the p and the q so here these px py and the pz are 2 minus 4 and the 1 while the qx qy and the qz are 1 2 and the 0 so now if we further simplify it then we can write it as this 0 minus 2 times ax minus 0 minus 1 times ay plus 4 minus minus 4 that is 4 plus 4 times az so that is equal to minus 2 times ax plus 1 times ay that is ay plus this 8 times az so in this way we found the p cross q so now if we see its magnitude then that is equal to this square root of minus 2 whole square plus 1 whole square plus 8 whole square so that is equal to square root of 4 plus 1 plus 64 that is equal to square root of 69 so we can say that here this unit vector ar is equal to this 1 divided by square root of 69 times minus 2 ax plus ay plus this 8 times az and now to find this vector r we need to multiply this unit vector by its magnitude so that will be equal to this 4 times ar so that is equal to 4 divided by square root of 69 times this minus 2 ax plus ay plus 8 az and if we further simplify it then this vector r will come out as minus 0.963 times ax plus 0.48 times ay plus 3.85 times az so in this way we got the value of the vector r so similarly now let us see the last example so now in this example instead of the vectors we have been given the vector field so here we have been asked to find the component of the vector h along the ax minus ay at this point so for that first of all here we need to find the vector at this point p so let's say that is equal to hp so to find that here in this vector field equation we need to put the values of x y and z as minus 1 2 and 4 that means here this vector hp will come out as this 10 times 2 times 4 whole square times ax minus 8 times minus 1 times 2 times 4 times ay plus 12 times this 2 whole square times az so basically in this vector field equation we have put the values of the x y and z 
that means now this vector hp is equal to 320 ax plus 64 ay plus 48 az so in this way we got the vector at this point p so now we need to find the component of this vector h along the ax minus ay so let's say this vector a is equal to ax minus ay so basically now here we need to find the component of this vector hp along this a vector and of course this component is the vector component so here let's call this vector component as the ha so it can be given as this h dot this a that is a unit vector along the a times a so here we know that the unit vector along the a can be given as this a divided by the magnitude of the a and similarly once again this a can be written as this vector a divided by its magnitude so further it can be written as this h dot a divided by the magnitude of the a whole square times vector a that means here first of all we need to find the dot product of this vector h and the a so here this h dot a or to be precise this hp dot a can be given as this 320 times 1 that is 320 minus 64 times 1 that is equal to minus 64 and that is equal to 256 moreover here we know that the magnitude of the a is equal to square root of 1 whole square plus minus 1 whole square that is equal to root 2 so we can say that here the component of the h along this ax minus ay is equal to this 256 divided by square root of 2 whole square times a and that is equal to ax minus ay so that is equal to 128 times this ax minus ay and in this way we got the component of the h along the a vector that is the ax minus ay so in this way we can solve the examples based on the dot product and the cross product so now in the next video we will see the different coordinate systems that is used in the electromagnetic field and we will also see that why the different coordinate systems are required and then after we will also understand that how to convert the equation that is given in the one coordinate system into the another coordinate system so if you have any question or suggestion then do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos